first off, um, first things first, confirmation has been made now, courtesy of Christian Ronaldo's Instagram page and also these amazing pictures that I found on Twitter, courtesy of United Report with Christian Ronaldo, you know, donning, redonning the Man United jersey, the new Man United jersey. Christian Ronaldo is back. He's back in red. And um, it's incredible to see. Again, like I mentioned in the live stream that I did the other day, I was more worried that he's going to go to City as opposed to, you know, worried about, you know, anxious about him coming to United. I didn't really think we had a chance of signing him. I, I just assumed with this cultural reset and the way we're trying to go as a club, it just didn't make sense for us to sign a 36-year-old Christian Ronaldo. It'd make more sense to maybe, you know, save that money and maybe try and put that into the budget of signing a Haaland next year or whoever else you want to go sign. But pinning your hopes for a title challenge this season or next season on the back of Cristiano Ronaldo at phase six seems a little bit foolhardy, right? Especially when you look at the squad, especially when you look at the coaching staff, especially when you look at how we play football. It just didn't seem like the most logical decision to do. But, you know, thank God I don't run, I'm not part of any decision-making process there at United because in terms of feel-good factor, in terms of lifting the mood, in terms of, again, weirdly enough, lifting the expectations, signing Ronaldo is probably a masterstroke for whoever decides to go for him when City you know when the word got out the City were trying to wrap up that deal because what this does is that without you know any shadow of a doubt this is the signing that is definitely going to make people think okay cool United should be challenging for the trophy should be challenging for trophies this season at the very least challenging for the league no one's saying we should be winning it outright you know with 10 points to spare at the end of the season no but we should be there and thereabouts with the team that we have if we end up finishing third or fourth and stuff it's just going to be un unacceptable no matter what kind of season the other teams have unless the other teams have like a season where they only lose like three games or two games right then you're going to say okay cool this was a fairly stacked season and everyone came out of their A game which you think might happen because Liverpool look incredibly strong Chelsea look really good um, City are also going to do City they're going to spank a few teams 5-0 along the way so I don't know man it's going to be tough I, I've said it before previously which is a weird thing to say because again I'm not the biggest Oli Gunnar Solskjaer fan I still think he's a fairly mediocre coach and I think once he ends up leaving United we'll definitely see what his actual level is similar with David Moyes a lot of people think he was got unfairly treated and then he ended up having a little bit of a a little bit of a madness when he left United in terms of his career he went up down sideways and then eventually kind of stabilised himself obviously at West Ham but I think we're going to see where Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is legitimately in terms of how he's regarded in the football world in terms of the managers that are out there because you assume if you're a coach of United or manager of United once you leave you should have the option to go to any club in the world right really you know especially if they've had you especially if, if they've got a vacancy you should be able to put your application in and be you know seriously considered for that role but I think we're going to see with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer especially with the, the second the team that he manages after United it's going to be a little bit dicey so but yeah that aside i'm interested to see the experiment obviously i'm interested to see if this experiment can actually work whether or not you can win a league title or challenge for no let's say league title is where or challenge for multiple trophies let's not say single trophies because we've seen what roberto di Matteo obviously did at chelsea when he won the champions league that season but i'm interested to see this experiment can you win league titles or challenge for league titles and win multiple trophies in a season or maybe a couple of seasons with a fairly average mediocre let's say run-of-the-mill coaching staff but excellent world-class players is that possible because you know no one's saying you know RB Leipzig and flipping Borussia Dortmund aren't going to beat down our door for you know Michael Carrick and flipping you know uh what you call it Mike Phelan you know what I mean they're not let's just call a spade a spade these guys are all you know all thing with Jiggy McKenna these guys are fairly mediocre running the mill guys who will probably end up going back into some you know youth based football when it comes when they end up leaving United whether or not it's at United or somewhere else so I'm interested to see if that experiment's going to work I really am and I'm interested to see whether or not Ronaldo experiment will work too can we because the problem that we have I think was the other day against Wolves Edison Cavani touched the ball 13 times, I think, when I saw some stats somewhere. Something insane. No, he didn't touch the ball at all, actually, in the box. Let me, let me rewind that. I saw a stat somewhere that said Edison Cavani didn't touch the ball at all in the box when he came on for United against Wolves. Now, don't get me wrong. That game was a bit frantic. Wolves are a very, you know, difficult team to play against. Um, they've got a lot of quality. They make things awkward. Um, they're just a bit, a bit of a nuisance team, right? They're sort of like a a better version of Burnley right in that way they just you know when you know you're gonna when you go when you go to play Wolves you know you're gonna be in for a proper football match right it's gonna be a lot of you know um 
a lot of aggression. There's going to be a lot of, you know, counter-attacking football, a lot of direct football, um, just a lot of pressing. Like, just, you know, they just make you uncomfortable. So maybe if you're just Cavani, it's probably not the best game for you to come on as a sub because there's not a lot of space for him to move into, run into. So it's no surprise he didn't touch the ball, but still, it's super concerning. Edson Cavani came on, I think, if I'm not mistaken, around the 60th minute or something or 70th. Plenty of time to make an impression. And he didn't touch the ball once in the box. That's an issue. So for all the people out there criticizing people like Marsha, who I think you know should get greatly criticized, especially considering how Edson Cavani finished or played in the middle this kind of of last season and obviously Marshall hasn't really stepped up even though you know he's been out for a while I think it's been like six months or so he's been out of football so that might explain his rustiness but for everybody that complains about Marshall, I think we're going to be in for a big shock when we see how isolated Ronaldo will be playing up front and the lack of chances that he'll get but again the difference is because he's a genuine world-class player he's going to be able to make more out of scraps than other players will be right it's just it's what it is he's going to be able to get a ball that wasn't maybe intended for him pick it up and swivel and be able to bury it top corner right those are just the things that you can do when you're Cristiano Ronaldo um, and you've got the Midas touch so that could work but whether or not we can sustain that sort of you know football and that sort of performances week on week out I just don't think it's possible I don't think it's viable the first half of you know against Wolves and the majority of that game was terrible we got essentially outplayed and if Wolves had better quality they probably should have won by two goals or something right but in the end our star boy Mason Greenwood pops up and we win the game so I'm interested to see can Ronaldo change it can Ronaldo affect this and again I think in general he's just his influence around the team his influence with some of the younger players his influence with up you know um, just in the club overall will definitely rub off and I think this will be one of those kind of lever art everlasting afterglows sort of like when you know Zatan was at United um, that period right he kind of raised the professionalism a little bit raised the competitive level a little bit similar with obviously Bruno Fernandes when he first signed um, those players have that ability to sort of raise the frequency and I think we're going to see that obviously from Ronaldo and of course you know yeah, all the memories that we hold dear with Ronaldo. Like, look at that, man. You want me? You want a grown man to cry when I say a picture of Ronaldo looking at that? I do honestly want a grown man to cry because I will. I'll cry on stream. I'll cry and record. Sorry, I'll cry and record this podcast. I really will. So, yeah, I can't wait to see the guy, man. And he made a perfect, perfect, perfect Instagram post, which says the following in his caption. It says, everyone who knows me knows about my nerve. Sorry, my, my never ending love for Manchester United. The years I spent at this club were absolutely amazing. And the path we've been made together is written in the gold letters in the history of this great, great, amazing institution. I, I can't even start to explain my feelings right now. As I see my return to Old Trafford announced worldwide, it's like a dream come true. After all the times I went back to play against Man United, and even as an opponent, to always have felt such love and respect from the supporters in this stance. Especially even after he in, takes off his top and celebrates in front of our fans, in it. But you know, we'll forget that. Um, this is absolutely 100% the stuff the dreams are made of. My first domestic league, my first cup, my first quarter Portuguese national team, my first Champions League, my first golden boot, my first Ballon d'Or. Oh, God, he's so good. <laughs> they were all born from the special connection between me and the Red Devils. History has been written and the past is history will be written once again. You have my word. Yo, he's coming in hungry. He's coming in hungry. He's like, we are going to win something by hook or crook. He says, I'm right here. I'm back where I belong. Let's make it ha happen once again. P.S. Sir Alex, this one's for you. That is pure goosebumps inducing. This one's for you, Sir Alex. Are you insane? What are you trying to do? You trying to get me in my feels? You trying to get me have? You, you trying to make me have a boner? Is that what you want us to do? Because you've achieved it. Let me tell you that you've bloody achieved it. Oh my God, man! I can't wait. I honestly can't wait to see him back. It's just like, it's just not fair, in it? It really isn't fair. We've got one of the world's, well, one of um, the world's best players playing for us again. Again, destroying the team. Can we get the ball up to him? Can we create more chances? Can we defend the, you know, can we have a midfield that is cohesive and is able to build up attacks from the back? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Questions for another day. But Ronaldo's back. Ronaldo is back. Oh, I can't wait. I really can't, man. It's going to be fucking amazing when he ends up putting on the jersey. I'm going to be over the moon. 